Hello and welcome to Twitter Cuculus on the Monk. Today we're in Empire of Sin and we are doing part two of my gangster guide. You know, kind of like who to hire, why to hire them. This is a uh, late game. This is going to be top tier gangsters. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to tell you exactly why it is I tend to steer towards these gangsters in the first place and what maybe you should be looking for in a gangster you're trying to hire. But before we get stuck into that, guys, I just want to ask you if you do enjoy this video or maybe you learned something uh, new, don't forget to hit that like button and, of course, subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss out on more videos just like this because I am always uploading videos on Empire of Sin. So first up, of course, we have Jack. He has a health pool of 127. He doesn't have the best marksmanship, but I normally just leave him with a shotgun, if I'm honest. He has a 6 movement and a 72 initiative. But combined with his health pool, it is his trait why I like him. He has hair trigger with a 100% chance to activate whenever a person's HP or his own HP uh, it drops below 25%. He can run around, use his gun, unload it, you know, unload the clip almost completely, hitting anyone in his target radius. He can run up and use his melee weapon. He could even switch to his pistol, and he could also heal the person that got injured as well. It's a great trait to look out for. Next, we have Diana. Now, Diana is an incredibly powerful gangster. She only costs 12,000 up front. She has 110 HP for the health pool. She has a marksman of 95, defense bonus of 25, six movement speed, uh, and of course, she is a doxer. Now, all of those things I just listed is pretty handy. However, for 12 grand, she also comes fully kitted out. She has blue armor and a unique pistol that unique pistol is a dart gun it is absolutely devastating the way pistols work at the moment you can hit two different targets with it um, and it has a 40 percent chance to crit those crits do actually happen more often than not and they are devastating they can mop the floor up with anyone that you've kind of left alive taking them off the battlefield she doesn't necessarily have any great traits um, but that dart pistol is why I hire her. She's amazing. Next up is Barney Barnes, who is a con artist with 95 on in his health pool. He has 100 marksmen to give him a rifle along with his 7 on movement speed. And he will do wonders for you. He also has an 82 initiative, which is actually really good. That basically means that they are slightly higher up the queue when it comes to sorting out who goes first or has to wait till last in the uh, attack order now unfortunately he does have coward coward has a 25 chance to run if a member flees so if someone dies and say for instance you've got quinn as your doctor and she's running away there's a very good chance that he is going to run away as well it's a bad trait but he does make up for it now as a con artist he also has uh, knife throw. Knife throw only costs one AP to, to use and then you can use your rifle uh, to do a second hit as well. But on top of that, he is also a brewery talent. Um, now these talents are very useful in a game. There aren't many gangsters that actually have them. We are going to be talking about them a little bit in this video. Um, they do also stack. They basically give you a little bit more money and make things a little bit cheaper for, for you as well. And considering whiskey, alcohol is so overpowered in the game, brewery talents are great. Fourth on the list is Dale. He has 100 HP. He is, of course, a demolitionist, which means very early on he's going to get shrapnel and he's going to be able to use the explosives that you've been gathering. He only has 70 on marksman, but if you pair him with a submachine gun, you could also use a machine gun. But if you pair him with a submachine gun, you'll find that he will get the job done. Of course, that marksman is per bullet fired. Therefore, if you give him a gun that fires more than one bullet, it's going to do better job for you. But Dale also has hair trigger. Now, his hair trigger only has a 50% chance to trigger. Uh, but again, the more gangsters that you actually have in your squad um, that have these kind of traits, the better it's going to be for you. You are going to be dominating the battlefield. 
And unfortunately, yes, that's right. We have just skipped Baby Monks. Uh, be nice, be nice. But next up, we have Bruno. Bruno has 144 in his health pool, which is great. Only has 80 on Marksman, but does have 7 movement and 25 defense bonus. I normally just leave him as a shotgun. In fact, I usually give him little hell. Now, Bruno may not have any special traits, but what he is, is another talent fairy. <laughs> uh, he is a hotel talent, and hotel talents are very overpowered. Basically, they give you a percentage of income, 2% extra um, income, on, for instance, speakeasies, brothels, casinos, rackets in general of 1% um, if there is a hotel in the neighborhood. Um, I really like the, the hotel talents in particular. They do also stack and they give a percentage of the total income. Any money is good money. Also, it was also thought that these talents are only in play if the gangster in question is a lieutenant and behind a desk. However, this isn't true. These are passive traits that are going all the way through the battle, all the way through the game, regardless of where they are. Up next, we have Marco. He is someone that I don't actually use anywhere near as much as maybe I should. Has 100 HP, is a demolitionist as well. Has 95 on Marksman, 9 on Movement, and 91 on Initiative. He is possibly the fastest guy in the game. He will get across that battlefield faster than anyone else you have. Unfortunately, they do have a bad trait. They are afraid this person has a chance to flee from combat if someone in their crew dies. Now, it doesn't give a percentage, but it just says that they, they really could do it. So be careful if you have too many of these people in your crew. For instance, if you was to have Quinn, Barney, and Marco, you could have a real problem there during a fight. But Marco is another brewery talent. And of course, like I've said before, these do stack. Next, we have possibly the best gangster in the game, and I'm not over-exaggerating when I say that. Cristiano comes with a unique weapon and blue body armor. He has 100 on his health pool, 90 marksman, which is pretty good, 87 on initiative, and 8 on movement speed, or movement. Um, now, I usually just give him his shotgun. He has a very good, unique shotgun with 30% crit chance. And of course, like I already said, he does come with that police issue body armor. For only 15 grand, getting a fully kitted out top tier gangster, where well, he's value for money all the way. But he is the gangster that keeps on giving because he also has extremely good traits. He has shoot first this person will automatically go into overwatch at the start of combat meaning when you start the fight you will have a circle around cristiano anyone within that circle cristiano has a choice to shoot um this is before the battle has begun meaning that very often or not he's already put the battle in your favor um, before you've even begun the fight but he doesn't stop there because he also has hair trigger with a 100% chance to activate whenever a person's HP or whenever his HP goes down or another ally's HP drops below 25%. Um, again, we've already spoken about hair trigger, but as I said, Cristiano doesn't just have one. He has two traits. This is why, in my opinion, he is the best gangster in the game. Dotty is next, and what a gangster we have here. Dotty has 175 HP, 99 on Marksman. She does unfortunately like to be the underboss. She does have a bad trait there, um, how, and she will leave if you hire someone else as the underboss instead of her. However, that doesn't always happen. It's not guaranteed to happen, and if you hire her after you've already made someone an underboss... Well, there you go, problem solved. Now, she does come with some body armor. It's not great body armor. I would upgrade it to blue, um, but she does have a unique pistol, and that is a great unique pistol. It's a burst shot with a 20% chance to crit. It fires three bullets, and the crits do happen more often than not. I do get a lot of crits with her. She's basically like Dottie. She helps. She's basically like Diana. She helps mop up the people that you've already injured and clears the floor for you. 
Williams, however, is next. She is the one that I choose to have as my underboss over Dotty. She has a hundred leadership. For anyone that doesn't know, the higher the leadership, the more the wages drop when you hire an underboss. She's got the most leadership in the game. And that is why I normally choose her. She does also have 175 on the health pool and 99 marksman as well. Movement speed is only six, but that isn't that bad. And she may not have any traits, but she is a brothel talent. And we've already spoken about them. They all stack and anyone with those talents I would hire. And so we are on to the final two. I'm sure you won't be surprised who I've picked. It is, of course, the cleaner. The cleaner has 90 HP, 100 marksman, 7 on movement and 80 on initiative. He is a very good gangster. Honestly, before the recent nerf on prices on these gangsters, the cleaner just wasn't worth the money. Probably he doesn't deserve to be where he is in the rankings as well. Maybe a little bit further down the list, but he's still a very good gangster. He does have hair trigger. This one only has a 90% chance to um, activate, but it is still very high and very good to have. But much like a lot of the other gangsters on this list, he is a brothel talent as well. Lastly, that brings us to R. Now, R also got a massive nerf in price, and so people are hiring them a lot more. R only has 90 HP, but you don't get R for the HP. Has 100 on Marksman, 7 Movement, 80 Initiative, also comes fully kitted out. Has blue police issue body armor. And of course, a unique rifle, which has a 30% chance to crit as well. I tend to just leave R as I hire them. Um, very good gangster in general. And for 15 grand, getting a fully kitted out gangster, you can't argue with that. I'm sure it won't surprise anyone, but R also has a good trait. I think R also has more traits than anyone else in the game, but also has hair trigger, which has a 100% chance to activate. I forgot to mention that R also has 99 on leadership, so I'm sure a lot of people would also use R for their underboss. Um, but of course, they are also a casino talent, and of course, casinos is where all of the money's come in. When I'm Daniel Jackson, nine times out of ten, I will hire R just because it works well with what Daniel Jackson does. But that is it guys, they are the gangsters that I would hire if I was looking to put together a squad for the game in its current state after 1.05. Combat these days is a lot harder. If you approach a safe house, 9 times out of 10 they have an underboss, another gangster, and upwards of 12 guards to kill. I would recommend hiring 5 gangsters and of course, bringing along your boss. I think the number six works really well in combat. I think it still adds a element of difficulty. You still have to watch your step. You can still die. But I think it gives a good fight and an enjoyable experience. The game's still too easy if you were to go for ten gangsters. But I do think hiring five is a good magic number with the game right now. But guys, if you've enjoyed this video, if you've learned anything, or maybe you disagree with my list, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Again, I know a load of people love Baby Monks, but unfortunately, he only had the health pool and, of course, the gun for me. But guys, I will see you in the next video real soon. Take it easy, and I hope you enjoyed.